Today, data centers increasingly rely on server virtualization to deliver services and scaled applications. The virtualized data center, however, posts new challenges to network security. Cloud and security professionals must deliver the benefits of virtualization and cloud technologies without undermining the security of their infrastructures. With VSRX, Juniper empowers security professionals to deploy and scale firewall protection in highly dynamic virtual environments. In this demonstration, we are going to work through some of the key advanced security features with the VSRX. Juniper's VSRX is powered by the same general operating system as the physical SRX security gateways. VSRX delivers a complete virtual firewall solution that includes layer 4 through layer 7 security services, advanced networking, and automated VM lifecycle management capabilities. The UTM feature includes comprehensive content security with best-in-class antivirus, anti-spam, web filtering, and content filtering services. IPS, on the other hand, protects network by inspecting data traffic and taking actions against attacks as they are developing. IPS is tightly integrated with Juniper's application security features to protect against a wide range of attacks and vulnerabilities. The newly added App Secure feature is a next generation application security suite that delivers threat visibility, protection, enforcement, and control. Our demo is going to be focused on the key elements of UTM, IPS, and App Secure. We will also demonstrate the orchestration and management of VSRX instances using Journal Space Security Director and a Virtual Director. This diagram illustrates our demo infrastructure setup, which is very similar to a managed security service provider user case. Here we have multiple customers deploy their VSRX instances in the MSSP's virtual environment and different customers want different security services be associated with their VSRX instances. For example, customer 1 want to have AppSecure and IPS services, customer 2 wants to have UTM features, and customer 3 wants to have the basic stateful firewall services. Now let's take a look at the vCenter environment we set up for this demo. We have multiple VSRX demo instances already spin up and running and protect different customers' Windows 7 VMs. Each customer's Windows 7 VM is connected to their VSRX demo instance through a separate vSwitch in a separate private VNAN. We will use the journal space security director to manage and push security policies to different VSRX demo instances to demonstrate the feature. And we're also going to use the dashboard and the event viewer to monitor the events and the log information. Now let's take a look at how AppSecure works. We first look at how AppTrack works. AppTrack tracks application usage to identify high risk applications to analyze traffic patterns so we can improve network management and control. Before we start, let's check if our application ID signature database is up to date. From Space Security Director, we see our latest download database version is 2472. And now let's log into our VSRX Demo 1 device and show service application identification version. We see 2472. So we have the latest App ID signature database. We're good to go. We move to the dashboard and uh, have our live update. So we didn't see any web application hit our timeline and list. That's because we haven't enabled AppTrack yet. So let's go back to our VSRX Demo 1 device to enable AppTrack. We're going to first enable application tracking for Security Zone Trust. Now we're going to commit it. Now application tracking is enabled for Security Zone Trust. So let's go ahead to our Windows 7 VM and launch a couple of our applications. Let's open the browser. Let's go into open Amazon first. And also we're going to move on to Vimeo, which is a video sharing website. 
And also we're going to open Pandora, which is an online radio station which you can stream music. That looks like all the applications are open and running. So let's go back to the dashboard and check. Now we're seeing all the applications been heading up. Now we have seen all the web applications have hidden our timeline. We see Pandora, we see Amazon, we see Vimeo, and also we see you know all the applications associated with the Google Chrome web browser like double click ad services and some other Google services. We also see from our top web application list, we can see Pandora, Vimeo, in Amazon. From the dashboard, it's a quick and easy way to see how we identify all the applications with AppTrack. Now we have seen how AppTrack works. We're going to generate an app firewall to block an application. App firewall enhances security policy creation and enforcement based on applications rather than traditional port and protocol analysis. We're going to use Pandora as our example here. From Customer One's Windows 7 Virtual Machine, we're now live, stream, live streaming Pandora music um, you know, from our favorite radio station. We take a look at the dashboard. So from the F5 block event, we didn't see any data. There's no event hit our uh, screen here uh, because we don't have an F5 policy in place. Now let's go ahead and generate a firewall policy based on F5. So let's go to i firewall blacklist. We search for Pandora. After we find a Pandora, we put it into our blacklist. And we're going to update the firewall policy. After we save the firewall policy, we're going to push it into the VSRX demo and device. Uh, let's publish the policy and update the device based on the newly added app firewall policy. After it's done, now we have updated the device based on the newly added app firewall. Now let's move back to Pandora. Looks like this, the music has stopped streaming and we can no longer restart the music again. After a few trials, we still cannot start the music. So now let's go back to the dashboard. From the app firewall block event, we see Pandora sessions have been blocked. It. From our timeline, we do a refresh. It shows nicely how many Pandora sessions have been blocked from our F5 block event viewer. So now let's go to the event viewer to take a closer look. From the event viewer, we see flow sessions been delayed. Let's take a close look at it. We see the reason for the delay is F5 delay. And the source IP is our Windows 7 virtual machine IP address. From the log, we see the application, uh, the nested application is Pandora. So this proves our app file policy is in action and we are actively delay Pandora music stream sessions. And this concludes our app secure demonstration. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate how UTM antivirus works. We're going to use the Sophos antivirus engine to enable the UTM policy to block a trial to download the iCar antivirus test file. So now if we go to the customer choose Windows 7 VM, we should be able to download the iCar test file. Um, downloading is okay. And from the dashboard, we didn't see any virus showing up in our timeline. So now let's go ahead and enable our UTM policy. First, we're going to set up an antivirus profile based on the Sophos engine. We give the name of our profile UTM demo. And we're going to use Sophos engine. Uh, 
default action will be block any antivirus file downloading. On the notification, we're going to send a message to say virus warning from VSRX. Now we have created our UTM demo antivirus profile. We're going to generate a policy based on that. Now let's go ahead and generate a UTM policy based on the UTM demo profile. We also give the name UTM demo. And on the antivirus profile across all protocols, we're going to use the UTM demo profile to create the UTM policy. After we create the UTM policy, we're going to append that to the file policy to enable the UTM features. For VSRX demo to device, let's go ahead, go to role options, UTM policy. Now we're going to add the UTM demo policy as our UTM policy. And we're going to save the role. After this is done, we're going to publish the policy and it pushes the policy into the device. Now it's done. We have published and updated the VSRX demo to device with the UTM policy. Let's go back and try to do another download of iCar test file. This time we see the virus warning from VSRX, which is just what we set it up previously. So let's go back and try to download a different test file. Same warning message. So our UTM policy is in action. We're actively blocking any virus uh, virus downloading from you know the iCross website. Now let's go back to the dashboard. From here we can see we have two counts of iCar AV test being blocked in. Now let's go to the event viewer, and from here we can see two events um, from, this des from the destination IP address, that's the Windows 7 virtual machine from our customer 2. And we see the antivirus detected message here. So that's exactly what we have done previously. So this concludes our UTM antivirus feature demonstration uh, with the Sophos engine. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate how IPS works. First, let's define IPS policy. We go to VSRX demo one device, and we're going to see how the policy currently policy is. Because currently we haven't configured IPS mode. Let's put it into basic mode so we can load a template. So let's see. Let's go with a recommended template, and we're going to modify the the IPS policy on this device. So now let's go to see the IP policies. For the demo one device, we can see it's been pre-populated with a recommended uh, template with all the policy components here uh, regarding the IPS signature and action um, will be taken. Let's go to the file policy for device one. Currently IPS is set to off, so let's turn on IPS. We're going to save it, lock it, then we're going to publish the policy. And now we're going to publish the policy, IPS policy and push it into the device. Okay, uh, we're done with it. So now the IPS policy has been published and then loaded into the device. From security director dashboard, now we didn't see any IPS attack. Let's refresh it. No data shows up. So now let's go on to our Windows 7 virtual machine and we're going to use ZenMap to perform a port scan. Let's go to do a port scan with IP address of 172.19.101.181. 
and now we're going to do a scan from here. So we see the pause scan started, but let's go on to the dashboard. We can see we have IPS attack going on in the timeline, and it's from our Windows 7 virtual machine 192.168.112.3 and we have about 4k uh, 4,000 events here so let's do a refresh it seems the pause scan continues from the event viewer we can see a lot of details from the log so we can see a lot of um, sessions being generated from our source IP which is our Windows 7 VM IP towards that remote um, VM machine and all those events have been generated from you know between the source IP to destination IP. This illustrates how our recommended template IPS policy being in action and actively detect and block IPS attacks. Now we have seen all those great advanced security features works with VSRX. App Secure, UTM, and IPS has been fully demonstrated here. So now we're going to see how easy it is going to spin up a VSRX instance with Virtual Director. From the dashboard, first we're going to see the virtualization providers, which is our vCenter server. By providing the IP address of the vCenter server, we link the Virtual Director with the vCenter infrastructure so we can deploy our VSRX instances over there. Then we have our base VM image files for VSRX, which is our latest and greatest X47 D20 image. Based on the image, we're gonna generate a template so we can deploy the VSRX instances. On the template, we're gonna preset some of the VNX settings so it can be automatically linked to the uh, vSwitch uh, that's already been set up in the uh, vCenter infrastructure. To deploy a template, you're going to change some settings here. So first we can see the template information. Basically that shows our base VM image uh, file. On the virtual machine host configuration, we can set up which data center, which cluster and the server host will want to spin up the VSRX instance and uh, we can set up the data store basically uh, it could be a network attached storage on the virtual machine configuration uh, we can set up the virtual machine name and uh, the vm network mapping so we can when we spin up the vsrx instance it will be automatically connected to the uh, v switches and the internal vnets which already set it up in the vcenter env environment also, we can set up the boot up configuration. Basically, we're going to set up the root password and we're going to assign the IP address. It either will be static IP addresses or we can use DHCP to generate IP address, dynamic IP addresses for our VSRX instances. Then we're going to decide how many of virtual machine we're going to deploy. Then you can hit the button and deploy it. This is how easy you can deploy your VSRX instances in your virtual environment. And we have our latest image available on Juniper.net for you to download. And we also have the trial license associated with all these advanced security features you can play with. So go ahead and download the image and a trial license and have fun right now.